it's Lookin' Bratz. You can call me Dom. So this is my second video that I'm doing where I'm in person, I'm talking to you through the camera, through to YouTube. I filmed my first video, which was a haul yesterday, and then I went on to Instagram and Twitter, and I asked people to ask me questions, and here I am. I'm going to answer as many questions as possible. I got a lot of questions. I was really surprised to see as many questions as I did. I think I got around 200 between Instagram and Twitter, so I'm going to try to answer as many of them as possible. As I was editing the video from yesterday, the haul, I realized that I talked way too much, and some of you may like that. I think it was just a pain to go through an hour and a half worth of footage and trying to figure out um, how to condense that into a smaller video, and I think I got it down to a good hour and a few minutes perhaps, so we're gonna stick to that. But today I'm hoping to make this a shorter video, maybe not too short, but definitely less than an hour because that was a lot. Thank you so much for sending in questions, and I'm excited to go through some of them. I don't know what you can see in the frame right now because my eyesight is not good, but I do have some things to show off. Um, as I was reading through some of the questions, I did see questions about prototypes and samples and certain dolls, so I'm hoping to show those to you today. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the questions. I'm going to be pulling up my phone and just reading through them and picking some. I did respond to some of them individually through um, private message. I got a lot of compliments um, on my appearance, so thank you for that. That was very kind. So starting off very basic, what's your sign? I am a Leo, so just like Sasha, we're just a few days apart in birthday. Um, I am a Leo, I'm August 15th, and I think it kind of shows. <laughs> I will say that in terms of like filming, I used to film a lot when I was younger. Like I do like short films and I do YouTube videos, um, but I've never really been great with lighting. <laughs> um, I really got into lighting with like photography within the past year, and I think I've done a better job at that but I'm still trying to learn how to do lighting with my camera and like in terms of filming, so please bear with me if I am in this learning process. So my favorite brats, um, I would definitely say it's Sasha um, because I do see a lot of the Leo in her and I think we have a lot of similar attributes. I think we're very not, I don't know how to word this. I think we're just very like super into our interests and I think sometimes we tend to get stuck in our like heads like you know similar to like Sasha like I think she sometimes doesn't realize when maybe she's being like you know a little too like exerting herself too much and um, maybe putting herself out too much and sometimes I feel like I do that as well where maybe I need to like calm myself down or maybe simmer down to really just assess like you know the situations that I'm in and maybe not jump to certain conclusions or that kind of thing. I hope I'm explaining that correctly. Moving on, what is your favorite brat stall? That is such a hard question. I don't know. I don't know what my favorite brat stall is. I feel like it can really vary and I have a lot of like favorites. Like I think anything that I have out on display is a doll that I like enjoy. Anything I don't have on display. I do have dolls that I enjoy just stored away because I don't have room to display all of them, but um, a favorite brat doll, I can't pinpoint exactly one. Uh, I just love too many of them. I do want to say that I really love, and I don't have her, Wild Wild West Kiana because that was one of my first Brad stalls as a kid and I don't have her at the moment and I really wish I could own her again but it's a matter of pricing. Uh, she really inflated in price over the past few years and it's really disappointing to see people trying to uh, really raise up the prices as extortionately. I don't know if I'm using that word correctly or if that is a word and it's just really disheartening to see a lot of collectors, including myself, not being able to attain these dolls without really breaking our bank. And I really don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to spend 
you know, hundreds of dollars on a doll that is common. And it's not really fair to a lot of collectors who identify with these dolls. So that is an issue I have. Um, so I do really want Wild Wild West Kiana one day, uh, just at a reasonable price. I don't want to regret spending a lot of money on a doll. Not that I would regret spending a lot of money on a doll like Kiana. I just don't know if it's necessarily worth it to go through the financial trouble to a attain a doll like that a doll in general. I don't think it's worth going through so many financial struggles to attain a doll generally. I don't think anyone should go through that. Do you have prototypes or samples? Yes, I do. I don't know how to classify some things. Like I, Some people will say it's a prototype. Some people will say it's a sample. I think what I have is more leaning on the sample side. So what I will say is that something that I think is a factory sample, but some people call a prototype is the Mattel Bratz head. And I do have a question that I got about the Mattel Bratz, which I can just answer up next because it sort of fits. But I have a Yasmin, I think her name is Isabel, in what we found out a few weeks ago about the Mattel Bratz reboot. That never happened, thankfully. I do have the Isabel head and I do want to fix her up soon. I got her way back in 2011 or even like late 2010 going into 2011 because they were discovered around the start of the new year by my friend at Dolls or Whatever. I'm gonna name drop her again in this video. And I do have that and people call it a prototype but I think it might be more of a factory sample just because it came from a factory worker in China. So that is something that I really value but her hair, like, I played with her a lot, like, not caring that she was an unreleased doll. And also, at the time, it was unconfirmed if it was a Bratz doll. And now that we know, officially, that it was supposed to be for the Bratz reboot from Mattel. I think I want to reroute her, and that might be controversial, like, because it is a sample slash prototype. But her hair, like, it's saran, but it's starting to break, and that tends to happen with saran at times, especially when it's gone through a lot of play over the years. I used to do a lot of photo shoots with her, I used to do her hair a lot, and the saran just started to break down. And it doesn't look terrible, but I'd really like to revamp her, and I also want to give her, like, a high ponytail. Like, I love the Bratz high ponytail, so I think I might go in that direction, and I also want to get her, like, a new body and some new clothing and that kind of stuff. So I think that's one that's like really cool. But I do have other prototypes slash samples. So I talked about this a little bit in my last video, but I do have some Little Angels samples. I don't know if they're like samples or if they're supposed to be like prototypes, but if you see Yasmin here, if it focuses on her, she has um, hand painted eyes and lips and like everything I think it's all like hand painted and her head is like made of resin so it's like super like thick and it's like hard like you can beat somebody with this and her outfit is also like handmade I believe and she has like different wings from like the normal little angels so I think this is really cool I believe I only got her head and I got her outfit and then I bought like a like used beat up Little Angels doll off Mercari or something. And I took the body and I put it on like the head. And I had to glue it on so that she could be like a full fledged Little Angels. But that's a really cool um, sample that I own. And then I got this Chloe. And she did come with the body. She's not resin though. And I think this is just like a regular Little Angels Chloe as I'm holding her by her little ponytail. <laughs> But she also has a similar outfit to Yasmin, where it's all, like, handmade. So, yeah, you can see in the wings, they have, like, lining on the wings. And I don't know if there's any little angels that really have that, but I could be wrong. But, yeah, these outfits, like, she has a crown on hers, probably for Pretty Princess. And she has an angel wing on her little onesie, uh, which obviously is for Angel. So yeah, these are really cool little samples that I own. Oh, look, I'm trying to beat them with each other. <laughs> but yeah, like Yasmin's head, it's like solid. Like, this is a rock. I think the next sample, I'll let me start with like the more tame ones. Um, so I do have some Bratz 
pets samples which is so cool to me like I saw these at the flea market in California where me and a few others had found um, some factory samples so somebody actually asked what happens to prototypes and I was jokingly going to say they go in the garbage which is probably half true like some of them probably do end up in the garbage at some point but what happens to some of them like some samples will end up with factory workers in China and they'll probably sell them on AliExpress or um, Taobao but it really depends like on what they decide to do with it some of them might just trash them um, there are some samples like still like traveling like in different parts of the world like you just don't know where they're gonna end up um, some people in the Philippines have found samples some people in like probably Sweden have found them I'm forgetting the exact names somebody ended up with the 4th of July themed brats from like 2012 that never came out and that's pretty cool someone found that in like a random toy store so you just never know where prototypes and samples are going to end up and these ended up at a flea market because MGA did a warehouse sale and they were selling off all of their stuff probably as they were trying to shift from their old office to their new office around that time I believe this is 2017 2018 times and I ended up with quite a bit I mostly got things that were already made and like they weren't like new items but yeah it was really cool just to find that stuff and to find the pet samples um they're all the way up on my shelf and my brats pad behind me is blocking the way to get them so I'm gonna leave them up there but I'll try to insert pictures here it's actually like a month or two apart from each other like one is a version that the factory in China made and then you can see the notes written on them on what to fix from MGA and I guess it got sent back to them to then you know take the notes down and f make the alterations and then it's the second version of what it would have looked like and I really love these like I think it's such a cool piece of like Brad's history to have so I do have those something else I have so do you remember yummy land from MGA so they had the soda pop girls they had the ice cream pop girls um they were sort of popular I think I'm not sure but they did last about three or four years which is a pretty lengthy time for that sort of doll line especially from MGA who tended to dismiss a lot of their extra lines after a few years so I have one of the unreleased dolls I believe she's unreleased because my friend and I we cannot find any information about her on the internet aside from a sticker book that yummy land made way back in like 2007 or 2008 that had some like unreleased um, artwork on it so this is a tropical fruit punch girl which is a very interesting name and this is Mandy mango punch so I got her at the same flea market from the same seller and my <laughs> I honestly did not realize she was unreleased and then I sent pictures to my friend of like everything I found they had some brats they had some story time um, princess collection sorry story time collection dolls they had some my scene I don't know if that was from MGA's office if they were trying to see what was going on at Mattel but it was just cool to see everything and that's where I also found that princess Sasha and not princess Sasha like actually the big baby's princess Sasha that was widely released and she was like pretty cheap and then I saw her a few weeks ago at another store for like a hundred dollars and I was like I probably should have bought her when I had the chance so I also got a few other things at that flea market but they were just regular release dolls and there was also a Funkin' Glow Jade that I bought new in the box and I think she might have been some sort of sample or mock-up but she looks exactly like a regular Funkin' Glow Jade but she has a different year on her it's, it says 2004 so I don't know if that was their way of trying to reuse old stock or something um, it's all a mystery to me but I still have that doll in the box and I also not around me because I have it stored away I have a boxed sample of a moxie girls magic snow Bria and I also have also this is horrible but I noticed this in the box she her head is like starting to split so that's like really unfortunate but she's gonna stay in her box probably and then I have a true hope Bratz Chloe and this is hand painted so that's really cool to own 
I also once got a Moxie Girls sample from there. It was, and she had like super long hair and she was in the box and I did end up selling it to a friend. But yeah, I got Mandy Mango Punch. Uh, she is super cute. I got her like in her bottle and she also had her box and I did keep the box. It's somewhere in my closet. There was a spot for the pet in the package, but there was no pet in sight. And they did have a picture of what all the dolls would have looked like on the back. And I'm sure those other dolls are either in a landfill or in somebody's home, somebody's warehouse. Who knows where they ended up? I really wish I could have gotten more from that seller. I wish they had had some of the stuff that other collectors had purchased, but at least they're in good hands, I hope. And there was also that Big Bratz first edition Chloe statue, and I don't know who ended up with that. I don't know if that seller got it. I don't know where it ended up, but they were selling it off at that warehouse sale. And that has forever remained a mystery for me, and I really wish I had the chance to have possibly purchased it, even though I don't know where it would have went in my home. So that would have just been a really cool piece to own. And I want to know where that ended up. I think the final sample that people would love to see, and that I get questions about a lot, is this Bratz Babies Felicia. And this doll, I don't think was ever released. There has been no record of it being released anywhere. They did make a Bratz Big Babies Felicia, who did get a very wide release. Um, she's pretty common to come upon and when I mention the Bratz Babies Felicia they always assume I'm talking about Big Babies Felicia and they're like oh like why is that so special and I'm like no I'm talking about the regular sized Babies Felicia release and um I oof this is a story <laughs> so I ended up with this doll miraculously I always told myself that if I ever came upon this doll specifically Never would have thought she would be new in the box. I said, if I ever came upon this doll, I don't care about the price. I will purchase it. Somebody asked, what is your most expensive doll? And it was this baby. And honestly, like, did not mind paying the high price, to be honest. But it did break my bank just a little bit. It wasn't too much. I don't want to share the exact price, but I will say... It was a lot less than people will pay for a common Felicia, like a regular sized Bratz teenage Felicia. People will pay hundreds of dollars for that, and I did not pay nearly as much as some of those people would pay for a beat up nude doll. Anyways, the story is, is that this doll got listed on Mercari last year. I don't remember when exactly, and another collector in the Bratz community purchased it. I don't think the seller knew what they had in their possession and they probably got bombarded with messages so it was only $75 originally and someone in the Bratz community purchased it and then the seller took it down and they refunded that person and then it was sort of a mystery about where and who it ended up with. Somebody sent me a link to an offer up listing in California and I was like is this real but it was completely new pictures of the doll and I contacted the seller, I worked out a deal, and I felt bad that that other collector didn't end up with it, but I am also happy that I ended up with it in the long run, because I do cherish this doll, and I think I'm going to get a shadow box for her eventually, so that there's not a lot of elements touching it. People have asked to purchase this off of me, people have threatened to rob me, which is not funny, to be honest. <laughs> That's actually kind of terrifying. And people have offered to make me unbox the doll and clone pieces of it like have like casted molds of it at the moment i don't want to do any of that because it's a lot of work and i don't want to mess with the doll um what i will say is that part of her hair started to pop out so i had to go in a little bit and try to pop it in when i first bought it and then i also resealed it with like new circular tape like the circular pieces of tape that a lot of dolls come with so for now, she's going to stay in her box and, you know, as pristine as possible. But yeah, this is definitely probably the rarest and coolest thing that I own. The seller, I talked to the seller. The seller became aware of what it was 
once they got bombarded with all the messages on Mercari. And then they told me where they got it from, and they said it was from, like, have you ever seen storage wars where people try to bid on storage units and try to buy storage units that weren't paid off for by the original owner? That is what happened in regards to this Felicia. So this person came upon a storage unit, and it was in California, so I'm assuming it might be somebody who worked for MGA at some point. And they bought the storage unit, and they got some Brad stalls out of it. This was the only rare item that they really had. The rest were actually just common Bratz babies. So I don't know exactly, like, who, like, who owned the storage unit? Like, what's up with that? And I don't know, like, were there other things that maybe were there that we just don't know about? Are there other storage units out there? Where are these prototypes and samples ending up? That is just something that is so, like interesting to me and I would love to know more about but to move on with the Q&A I did answer about two or three other questions within that one question so I guess that knocks out a lot of things what is your recommendation for the brand this 21st anniversary that's a good question um I don't know I don't know what position I'm in to really be making recommendations because I'm sure they have all their own plans and all their own things going on. I would say I do hope they really focus on making more social media content that really fits with the brand. I think we've seen a lot of posting in the past two years that has been a lot of like fan-made content and that's great. I love fan-made content but I would love to see more of stuff coming from in-house, things from the actual company. I'd just like to see them maybe clean up social media just a bit and also really focus on getting the dolls in the stores and making them widely available. And I said this in my last video, I really loved how Monster High, it's getting a lot of publicity and it's getting a lot of attention in the store. So they have their own display and I think that'd be really great if Bratz were able to get something like that. Just a lot more dedication and focus into the resources that they have there I think could really benefit them but otherwise like I'm sure they have their own plans I sure they have their own thing going on so best of luck to them I'm I'm excited to see what happens in the next year I hope they continue with the brand moving forward and that this isn't just a nostalgia thing I hope it really turns into something bigger for the brand were you allowed to own Bratz as a kid and how was that experience? So yes and no. This is a very, not like a touchy subject, but it's very hard to answer. So I was allowed to have Bratz as a kid, but it wasn't necessarily favored by some of my family. When I lived with my mom and her ex-boyfriend, that was a really difficult time. I wasn't allowed to have dolls. I wasn't really allowed to have feminine type things in the household that belonged to me at least so it was a very difficult time and I didn't have dolls so I would go to my aunt's house and she would have her own dolls and then she'd get me dolls and then I'd have dolls in that sense but it was hard to bring them home I wasn't really allowed to bring dolls home and if I did then you know it, I'd be in trouble by my mother's boyfriend probably and then when we moved, we moved in with my grandmother, and my grandmother didn't necessarily agree with it, but she never really put up a fight about it. There were times where there were issues and arguments and all of that, but it's in the past now, and I think my childhood of not being able to fully dive into Bratz collecting and really be into the brand, I think that's what led me to this point in my life where... I will unapologetically really love Bratz and really collect them and be open about it as much as possible depending on the situations I'm in because I don't think there should be anything shameful about doll collecting especially as a male identified individual and I hope other people can have that luxury in the future if they don't have it now or I hope they have it now. I hope that people can feel a sense of peace now that they're able to express themselves. I hope that in the future, I hope that, you know, younger boys and male identifying, um, you know, individuals, I hope they're able to have that 
piece of like being able to buy dolls and play with dolls or collect dolls and I hope they're able to do that in peace and I hope they're able to have that for themselves without feeling that sense of shame that there's some sort of gender attached to something like collecting brats because I think that was the issue and that was only like 15, 16 years ago and it doesn't seem that long ago but it actually kind of is long ago now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, yeah, it's yes and no. I was allowed to have them. The experience wasn't the best and I don't think it was the best for a lot of people who grew up in my situation or are currently going through that situation. Just hope that things change and I do think things are changing a lot as of late. But now I'm an adult and I don't really care what other people have to say or think because it's my life and I know my boundaries with people. I know when I can cut people off in my life and I know that I don't need anyone to validate me as a person and validate my doll collecting. I am me and I think having this platform as Lickin' Brats has really uplifted me a lot in that journey of being able to do that so freely. That was a lot. Anyway... How many Bratz dolls do you have? I do not know. I don't count. And I don't know if I ever want to count. And I also got a question asking, um, do I have nearly every Bratz doll? That is a big fat no. I wish, to some extent, I wish I did, but to some extent, I don't want them all. I think... There's a lot of fun in, like, acquiring things over time and finding things and finding great deals on things. I like to go thrifting. I like to find flea markets. I like to find good deals on eBay and Mercari. And that also is, people ask me, where do I buy brats? It's everywhere. Like anywhere I can find them, I will buy them. They are becoming more available in stores like Target and Walmart and some toy stores overseas and like those big box stores like Big W. And I don't know fully everywhere across the world. I think that is a misconception. I do not. But just to name a few. So yeah, there are dolls, you know, Bratz dolls becoming more widely available in certain big box stores. But those are only the new releases. But if we're going to talk about, like, old releases, like everything behind me, then it's really like finding certain places. I think Facebook Marketplace is a great place to look sometimes. I've gotten some really great deals off there. I bought my live in concert Jade. She's up there somewhere. I got her for $5 off of Facebook Marketplace. I got all four first edition Bratz dolls from the 2005 re-release pack set, whatever you want to call it. And I got that for $35. So you just never know what deals you're going to come upon. So definitely eBay, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, um, Offer Up sometimes has some great deals. And there's certain, you know, online stores in other countries. Like there's Carousel. There's other places. I don't know. Carousel just popped up in my mind for some reason. And there's also flea markets, thrift shops. Sometimes you'll find a random toy store that just sells old stock. You just never know what you're going to come upon. It's really about looking and don't never expect anything to come to you easily. You have to really be focused and really be looking for these things. And never buy overpriced stuff is what I will recommend. Never give in to those high prices because there's going to be a chance that one day in the future you are going to find it for a reasonable good price within your budget. Some people may just buy it for the satisfaction of having it immediately. Some sort of gratification might come from that. And I totally understand that. But if you, if you are a patient person, just wait and wait for something good to come along. And that is my recommendation for buying brat stalls, especially on the secondhand market. Top seven favorite brats. Definitely the core four, so that knocks out four. That's Chloe, Yasmin, Sasha, Jade. And ah, I really like, I don't know, it's like choosing between like, I don't have kids, but if I had to choose between my favorite kids, I feel like it'd be Brad's characters. Oh goodness, I do think Felicia falls in there. I do want to see more happen for Felicia. I think the basics, like I love Nevra. I, oh my goodness, I love them all. I, I can't choose. You can't make me choose. 
how has this year been for you so far? Um, <laughs> that's an interesting question. It's been weird. It's been a weird year. Um, it's been good. It's been bad. Like, you have ups and downs, and I think that's everybody. Like, we just all have stuff that we're going through. I think a lot of my year has been dedicated to work, um, and I do have three jobs, so it's a little ridiculous. Um, but I will soon probably, hopefully, have a full-time one full-time job soon enough. We'll see what happens. I don't know what's happening in my life at the moment. Um, so I'm here recording a YouTube video for you to watch. That's what's happening in my life at this very moment. Um, but yeah, my year has been super all over the place. And I think it's a combination of working a lot. A combination of that plus doing look and breath stuff. And also I finished up my master's degree. So it's been a lot, but we're getting through it. I hope, thank you for asking that. I hope your life has been going okay so far throughout 2022. Let's hope for a good final half of this year. Show us your boxed Bratz collection. I can't. <laughs> I don't have many Bratz in the box. I do have some, but I have, I don't know how to explain this. I have a big bedroom now. We moved into this house, my family and I, about two or three years ago, and I ended up with the biggest bedroom, which is like an attic, and I think I would have to reserve some sort of collection tour or boxed collection tour for another time, because I have this huge closet, it goes from wall to wall, and it goes deep in, and I put a lot of my box dolls in there, but at the moment, it doesn't look good. The closet has a lot of exposed insulation and I have to get that done soon. So I've been saving up on the side. It's just like a lot to have to unpack it all. And then once it's done, I'm going to have to put it all back in. But I think once that is done and over with, I think I'll be able to show more of my collection that is stored away. So one day when I have the funds to redo my closet then yes and also like one day when i feel up to it i'll go i'll do an in-depth collection review but for now you can see this corner of my room this is where most of my brats are and i do have a lot of dolls in other spaces like i have more brats on a different table like the brats that mg has been sending me for the past year I have Rainbow High on a different shelf, and I also have some brats on that shelf because I didn't know where to put them. This part of my room just keeps expanding, like I just... I'm so sorry, Sheridan. I knock Sheridan over. <laughs> my forever dive in Sheridan. And... Yeah. She needs to fix her hair now. <laughs> I found the Sheridan for super cheap, new in the box last year. I think she was like $25. And I felt so lucky. Part of her lip liner is missing, but I don't care as much because she's $25. We love Sheridan. Sheridan was also another doll that I had as a kid. I got her in Christmas 2006. She, so she was one of my first Bratz dolls at the time. And I did love her a lot. So I took... I was trying to do something from, like, the commercial. And I put the her star necklace as a belt. And then that Bratz Baby's Bride and Groom set, I got one out of box, and I took the ring, oh, and I used it as a choker, like they do in the commercial, and I love it. It's a look. And I have my Forever Diamonds runway back here. I love it. What is your favorite Bratz collection? Oh, I don't like that question, because I don't know. I don't know. I really love, I will say, a Secret Date, I think is a really cool collection, and I would like to own all of them one day. But I also really love Live in Concert. I think that was something I hyper fixated on as a kid, and I really wanted all the dolls to that. And I do have nearly all of them, except for Nevra. So we'll see if I ever get her one day. I My friend just sold me the never styling head so I do have her styling head but I don't have her actual regular doll and there are some people who own like five of that doll or six of that doll and I own zero it's not a nice life to live how do you manage to keep all your dolls clean and in tip-top shape 
it's so hard it is such a hard life to be a doll collector and also be a perfectionist i am also obsessive compulsive and not in a quirky way so it's really difficult to really stay on top of everything and clean everything but I do it like I force myself to do it because I know I'm not going to be happy or satisfied and it's going to bother me if everything is like dusty so I dust a lot and I also in between dusting I'll have a dust sprayer like the can of dust and I'll spray my shelves so that any dust that might be accumulating gets sort of moved around a bit and it's not all just like there and I will go in with a duster at least once a month or as much as possible so that everything is in good shape and I'll dust the top of their heads because I think on a lot of dolls with darker hair tones they tend to like collect dust like especially around their parting so it's a lot of like taking my duster and actually like dusting the top of all of the dolls heads and I also use a I wash all of my dolls hair I'll only do it like as many times as it, I need to like I won't do it consistently with all my dolls because then that would be me hating my life <laughs> but I will like when I get a new doll I'll wash the hair I'll condition it if it needs to be boil washed I will boil wash it which means putting it in boiling hot water so that it becomes a little bit more silkier and then once it's all dry I'll go in with some Vokes water wax which is another thing that my friend Serena put me on to and I'll take just a little bit and I'll put it throughout the hair and I'll style it whichever way I need to and I think it comes out really great and it looks so neat and it helps the hair like not have any flyaways and it'll help it all stay together so I love using Vokes water wax and I think that is a godsend honestly. Do you collect Monster High and if you are are you getting the new ones? Um yes. I sort of collect Monster High. I have a very small collection aside from what I just bought so if you saw my haul video you'll know that I got all the Haunt Couture dolls and I got all four of the recent reproductions. So I do collect Monster High to an extent. Um, I loved the Haunt Couture dolls. I thought they were really nice. I do think they were a little pricey for what they were. But I got them and I'm trying to enjoy them. My Draculaura has a messed up lip and that's my only issue. And Frankie's earrings and her shirt um, are... I know her earrings are going to stain and I don't know if her shirt is but I think... I'm pretty sure it's going to stain in the long run, which is upsetting, but in a few years will I remember that I spent $90 on these dolls? Um, but I do love the new reproductions. I think those are great. And they're so yeah, and I'm excited to see what they put out um, for their comeback, aside from the Haunt Couture dolls and the reproductions. I hope they have a good comeback, and I'm excited to see what they do with that. And I do have a small collection. I bought a few during the pandemic because they were very cheap at the time. My only issue was that you could definitely tell their hair was like rock hard because of the glue seeping out. And I did get rid of some of the glue. And if you know, my Claudine's eye came off during that method with using the Goo Gone uh, adhesive remover. That was horrific, but it's fine because now I have the reproduction and it's just about the same doll. And I do have Zombie Gaga that is part of my collection. I got her for Christmas in 2016, so she's here. And I also, I don't know why I kept them for so long, but I got the, I don't know, the roller skating one. There was a whole movie dedicated to that, I think. And I have the operetta from that collection, and I put her in a fashion pack. And then I think a little bit after I did that, Kohl's came out with a random exclusive operetta and Claudine and it's operetta wearing that same exact fashion pack and a very similar operetta doll I believe but don't quote me on that because I don't know a lot about Monster High and I also had an Abby Abominable and she's still around she's in my closet and I had those from like 2012 or around that time and I kept them and I don't know why I kept them as long as I did but I still have them from nearly 10 years ago so that's kind of funny so I ha I've had those around but I used to collect Monster High a little bit when I was younger I had some of the first edition dolls I also I now have the second edition Draculaura because I really do love her she has a very cute design I bought her during the pandemic and I did have a Gloom Beach 
I believe it was Draculaura and Frankie when I was younger, and I ended up donating those at some point. And I think those were all the Monster High dolls I had. There may have been more, but nothing is coming off the top of my mind. I think my focus was really Bratz when they came back in 2010, and then I sort of just shifted focus. And I'd buy Monster High here and there, but it wasn't a focus of mine. Rainbow High versus Shadow High? Ooh. I don't think we've seen enough of Shadow High to really make that assessment, but I really do like the Shadow High designs. I think they're very cool. I'm excited to see more of Shadow High, because I love, I love dark dolls. Like, I love, like, a dark theme. Like, I think Monster High was really cool with that. I liked Bradzilla's, and I really like Living Dead dolls, so it's cool to have another darker line on shelves. And also, compared to Rainbow High, like, these are full grayscale dolls, so it's nice to see that contrast on shelves. If you could go back and buy one doll again during the heyday of Bratz, what would it be? All of them. I don't know. <laughs> Probably a lot. But if I had to choose one, I would say live in concert Nevera, but I never saw her in person. For going back to a doll that I may have, like, seen in person but never purchased, it would probably be the first triplet set. And that might be cheating because it's three dolls, but it's one set. So we're going to count it. I would go back and I would beg my mom to buy that for me when I was a kid because I saw the triplet set at a toy store like down the street from my house and someone ended up getting it and I hope they enjoyed it but whatever. <laughs> how many Sashas do you have? I don't know. I've never counted how many Sashas I have um, but yeah I think I have a good ratio of all my dolls like in terms of the core four. What brat stall in your collection do you think has the best outfit? Mm. This might be a hot take, but I love Collector Yasmin from 2018. This has to be one of my favorite outfits on a brat stall. Like, I love all these pieces. A lot of people make jokes and say she looks like a detective or a spy, but I think that might be what I love about her. She's like a little Nancy Drew. But yeah, I love this. I, I do wish the boots had been like one piece and not a stocking and a felt shoe. But honestly, otherwise, I love this outfit. This is such a cute outfit. I love the way Hayden designed Yasmin and all of his illustrations. There was another Yasmin outfit from Hayden that I really wish we could have seen on a doll. And I just, I love the way he does Yasmin. I think he really understands her style. And I think he like sort of elevates her style in a way where it's like that boho chic, but it's very like, I don't know, I love it. And I, oh, this jacket, I always wanted something like this and I ended up getting a jacket similar to that. And I love this top because it's like lacy and oh, I love this outfit. I don't know if it's like my favorite outfit, but it's definitely up there and it's the first thing that comes to mind. I did love this stall. Like you can have your you can have your opinions and everything about the Bratz collector line, but I did genuinely enjoy the dolls. Next question. You so cute. Thank you. <laughs> how did you know about Bratz before they came out? I don't know if that means how did I know about Bratz news before it comes out, or if I know about my experience with Bratz, but I will say some people were asking me if I knew when the next leak was going to happen or if I know when more news is going to come out, and I don't know any information. Things just happen, honestly. Things will pop up, people will post things, people in, you know, the factory workers in China might come out with a picture of something, like you just never know when Bratz news is going to come out. I've never been briefed, I've never been... I've never been given any, like, materials that state, like, oh, here's the release date for this. It's always been word of mouth. It's always been things just popping up. It's always been somebody, even at MGA, sometimes they'll post things on their own behalf, like Jasmine Larian and Isaac Larian. They've posted about stuff going on behind the scenes. So it really just depends on how things work out. I've never seen anything where it's been, like, intentional, except it's from MGA. Otherwise, it just happens sporadically, like, it just, you never know what's gonna happen. I've never had anything where it's been like, we're gonna post about this on this day, like, I don't know anything, so. I don't know if that's what you meant, but that's, that's that. 
Part is Bratz doll you acquired, the baby's Felicia. What is your least favorite Bratz movie and why? Mmm, <gasps> that's a good one. I think it might be one of the kids or babies movies. I don't... I didn't necessarily... I don't hate any Bratz movies, but I do think some of the weaker ones came out towards the end of the Brat, like their movies when they were coming out with movies, like that rain of everything. I do think The Bratz Baby Save Christmas is probably a weaker movie. It was fun, it was cute, but I don't know how necessary it was, especially when they didn't have a doll line attached to it. And the same thing with Bratz Kids Fairy Tales. Like, I enjoyed the movie, but again, there was nothing really attached to it except for the fact that it was a movie. Your age? I am 23. I'm going to turn 24 soon. Someone said face reveal, and that's funny, because I have shown my face quite a bit on social media, but I guess, you know, it's everyone's first time. Do you have the PDF coloring pages that used to be on the Bratz website? I do have some, and I'm trying to find a way to post that on lookinbrats.com in a way where people can download them, but it won't take away from what I do normally on lookinbrats.com, if I'm explaining that correctly. What's the doll that you have to hold every day? I don't know. I feel like it really will change. Like, if I, like, pick up a doll and I'm, like, you know, just, like, admiring the doll. Sometimes I just get enamored by certain dolls. I think for quite a bit it was actually that collector Yasmin behind me. Um, because I do love that doll. She's very pretty. Have you accessed any parts of the Bratz website from 2001 to 2002? Yes, those are pretty easy ones to access, 2001 and 2002. Um, and I've posted some clips on my YouTube channel here, actually, on my YouTube channel. I do have clips of some of the Flash content from 2001, 2002. I think some from 2003. Otherwise, if it's stuff from, like, 2003 to 2008-ish, then it's really hard to access that stuff because... A lot of it is dependent on an older Flash player, which is no longer in existence. So I don't have all of that content, but anything I do have is most likely posted on this YouTube channel. So if you go through my videos, you'll see a lot of... I had this whole moment in 2020, going into 2021, where I was just posting everything I could find that used Flash Player because Flash Player ended uh, by the end of 2020 going into 2021 so yes I do have some stuff there got a lot of questions about my eyebrows <laughs> people ask me who does my eyebrows and people were complimenting them so thank you I actually do my own eyebrows and I've been doing them since I was 17 I want to say because I would I used to go to a waxing place and I'd, I'd get my brows done once in a while but I think they were just doing them in a sense that weren't very flattering to my face so I started doing them on my own and I think I'm at a really good place with my brows so I don't do them super often I just clean them up every now and then and I also I cut my own hair because I like to be cost effective I can't afford going to a salon like that so I just do a lot on my own top five Bratz collections That's a good one. That's a good one. I love the slumber party lines. I love the sleepover ones. So I'm tempted to say like slumber party and nighty night. I think nighty night doesn't get enough, doesn't get enough buzz. I think nighty night's a little underrated. Um, and they've, they've become a little harder to find and a little bit more expensive. So I guess some people want them but i think a lot nighty night didn't have a good rep i think tokyo go go really is a great line too girls night out and i want to say like live in concert maybe I, I know a lot of people will disagree with me i just love i love live in concert are you into other doll lines and do you have any niche lines of dolls that are not brats that you like and the answer is yes um, I do collect other dolls. I love fashion dolls. I love dolls that were made to compete with Bratz and are very Bratz-like. I do like my scene, but I don't have a big my scene collection. I would love to get more into them one day, but I think my passions lay other in other places at the moment. And my scene is going through an inflation era at the moment, so I don't think I'm going to be buying any my scene anytime soon. 
Um, I do like Monster High. I like OMGs. I like Rainbow High. I'm into Shadow High now. I'm getting into Mermaids Mermaids. I do have the first wave set now. I told myself I'd wait a bit before I bought them all. And I just ended up buying them all because it was convenient. I love Moxie Girls. I think those are great. I love Moxie Teens. I love, I love a lot of dolls from between like the 2000s to now. I think I love most dolls. I will say my my number one probably is, and a lot of people on Twitter probably know this, I love this one doll line from Integrity Toys. They had a playline division called Playtend Toys, and they came out with this line called Off the Hook. And I searched years looking for these dolls, but I could never afford them because they were being priced so high by secondhand sellers. And then a few years ago, I want to say 2017, I found four of them in a big doll lot. So I bought it and I got four of them from there. And then over the years since, I found them here and there. And the only issue with them, and I'll show some of them actually, is that they have polypropylene hair. But to be fair, these dolls cost like $10 in KB Toys back in the day. So... It's not like they were supposed to be expensive, but they look expensive. Like they have a very collector feel to them. So what I did is I've been rebodying them onto fashion royalty bodies from the early ones. Like I think it's called FR 1.0 and they're like more fit for the original off the hook bodies. They look very similar in terms of the torso. They're just a little bit taller than the off the hook bodies. So I've been rebodying them so they have more of a collector feel. And I also reroute a lot of them with saran hair so that their hair won't break off in a few years. So I'll actually show some that I've worked on. All right, so here is Toya. Um, this is one of the off the hook dolls. And she's not on her original body. She has the FR body. And I got her a stand from the Integrity Toys website. A lot of people don't like these stands, but they do the job. Like, they get the job done. And I rerouted her with saran hair, and I gave her a new body. And she's a very stunning doll. Like, I love their faces. I think they have such a unique face mold, and they have, like, a really great face up. They look very sassy. They're very much a mix in my eyes, a mix between Mycene and Bratz, although from what I've heard, these were supposed to come out before Mycene, and I've heard that Mycene might have been an answer to these dolls. So I don't know what the full T is behind that, but I do think Mycene was more an answer to Bratz in my opinion, but it also may have been an answer to Off the Hook. But yeah, this is Toya. Her hair's a little messed up now because I just took her off the shelf. But yeah, I rerouted her with Saran, so now she has, like, very, very long hair. This was one of my first reroutes, and I think I did a decently good job, honestly. So I'm proud of myself because these were my first reroutes were on these dolls. And then, oh, her hair got messed up too. This is Dale. Yes, and I also rerouted her with Saran, and I redid her original hairstyle. I love the way she came out. She's actually on the original Off the Hook body. My issue with the original Off the Hook body is that... So they have these arms, but they're like bendy. They're not actually articulated. And that's fine. Like, I don't mind that. But their necks... Like, if you move the head around too much, they'll just crack off. So that is really unfortunate. I just bought some new bodies, so she's probably going to get one of those new bodies soon. This is probably... Ooh, I just pulled her hair like that. Um, I need to change her bands, her rubber bands, soon. But yeah, she's so cute. And I love the way I did her hair, the way I did it, so... And I love her outfit. I had to makeshift her top, though, because I don't have her original top, so I printed out this thing, and I tried to iron it on. It says OTH for Off the Hook. But yeah, she's so cool. Like, I love these dolls. They have such stunning faces. They're really pretty. And this is probably, like, my biggest niche line that I'm into because there's not many of them and I'm really happy to own like a decent collection of them. First Brad doll you ever had. So yeah, I talk about this a bit. It's really hard to pinpoint exactly which one is my first because I know I was into Bratz, but not like into them as a kid, like before I really got into them. Like my aunt used to collect them quite a bit. And she had, like, first edition Yasmin. I remember that. But I think I was more into Disney Princess and Barbies. 
And then I moved into Bratz. I moved out of my mother's ex-boyfriend's house. That's, and it was like less, less of an issue for me to own dolls. So I got into Bratz in 2006. A lot of the girls in my school would play with them and I'd play with the girls. I was always like into playing with the girls and not with the boys as much. And I got... I used to, this is funny, I used to print out paper dolls that I could find on the internet and I'd always be on the Bratz website. I don't think the Bratz website had paper dolls, but other like websites did and I'd always print out coloring pages and I'd color them in and those would act as my dolls until I actually got Bratz dolls. So I got my first technically before Christmas 2006. It was like this December of 2006. My mom bought me the, I have her right behind me. This isn't the original one I had as a kid, but it's the Bratz Babies Forever Diamonds. Chloe, um, she's so cute. And this was the first one my mom got me. She came with a little DVD. And I used to watch that DVD on repeat, but there's literally four minutes of content on it. And I actually posted it. It's the Bratz um, Passion for Fashion Diamonds trailer. And it doesn't even have like any clips from the movie. It has like a few, but not all. It's mostly from the TV series. And there's also, like, a Bratz Babies music video, which I actually did post on Instagram. I should post that on here soon. But yeah, it was her. This isn't the one I had as a kid. I repurchased her a few years ago, and I love her. Like, she's so cute. And this was my first, technically. And then my first teen Bratz doll was Wild Wild West Kiana, which my aunt owned in the year before. So I think she bought her in 2005. And then she sent her to me when she sent me a bunch of gifts for Christmas 2006. So I guess it's between those two. Someone said, OMG, the pixies in the background. I beg that they re-release them. So you might be able to see them up there. My Bratz Fashion Pixies. Uh, yeah, I love the pixies. I know a lot of people have differing opinions on Bratz Fashion Pixies. But it would be really cool to re-release them. Maybe like a better version though. <laughs> what do you hope gets reproduced that hasn't been announced or leaked? I'd like to see Tokyo Go Go and Slumber Party. Maybe live in concert, but I don't think live in concert has the same camaraderie with fans as Tokyo Go Go or something like Slumber Party. I think Slumber Party would be a safe one because it has a lot of accessories. There's a lot that they can do with Slumber Party, so maybe between those. Favorite, least favorite thing about the 20th anniversary dolls? Love your account, by the way. Thank you to that person. Um, so, favorite thing is that they even consider doing it, <laughs> re-releasing those dolls. I think, for the most part, the dolls came out great. I think the fashions are really great. I think there's a lot of improvements they made from the original dolls. They have longer hair, better hair even. It's some of the best Saran hair that I felt. And I know there's some variations with nylon hair, so that's pretty cool. Um, least favorite things, I think it was the distribution. I don't think there was a good method of getting them out to stores, and I think they might have announced them a little too early. And I know that, that the whole Hot Topic thing was a way to build up hype, but I think that a lot of people didn't know what to do because they wanted the dolls, but they didn't know how to get the dolls. So I think maybe some more transparency about how the dolls were being stocked in stores and maybe even a later announcement and also some of the quality issues with chloe uh chloe had some really crazy looking eyes the ones that mga sent me looked really bad i i mean i i've grown to like be okay with it and it was a free doll so i can't really complain and i don't think they, i don't think they realized the quality issues with chloe but she looked really bad so i think that was my biggest issue i think it was that and distribution those were my least favorite things from 20th anniversary what do you think about the bratz designer pride dolls so you may have seen there have been some leaks of the designer pride dolls and i don't have a fully formed opinion because we've only seen a picture of them like very blurry pictures i think somebody took the pictures with like a potato and there's not much to see i think i don't think people that are used to such high fashion stylized versions of brats i think people are expecting very like 
fashions from like Fashion Nova or something like that, which is completely okay. Like I'd be down to have a Bratz doll line that looks like that, but I don't think people are used to actual designers designing for Bratz. So it is suspected that Jimmy Paul is the designer for the Pride dolls. And I love his work. I think he does a lot of great things. And I recently found out that he actually follows me on Instagram. So that's pretty cool. And I followed him back because I didn't even realize. But yeah, I liked what they did with GCDS. I think it might take a while for people to warm up to it. And the concept of Bratz being designed um, in a sense where it's not like Y2K inspired. Or it's not something that's like a basic fast fashion type of deal. Um, I would love to see them do more stuff where it might be more... Like what they did with other lines like Style It and Funk Out and Flaunt It, where it's just fashions of the day. But I'm okay with very, like, high fashion stylized dolls. I think it's going to be exciting. I think the faces looked really good, so I'm hopeful about the faces. But again, there's not much we can say about the dolls at the moment. I think we just have to wait and see what they actually look like instead of a picture that was taken with a potato. And I'm not saying that picture was actually taken with a potato. I'm just saying, as a joke, it looks like somebody took those pictures of the potato because those are very low quality pictures and I don't know. I think a lot of people jump to a lot of conclusions about what the dolls look like based on those pictures. Do you own the Midnight Dance dolls? Also love your account so much. Thank you. Um, I used to own Megan. So I did get Megan in 2006 for Christmas. I didn't like her. I thought she was not pretty, which a very, very much a big change from how I feel now because I actually love the Midnight Dance dolls. Actually, I, I've i grown to like darker dolls a lot, like very like dark gothic dolls like that. So I want to own them again one day, um, but it's just a matter of pricing. I think prices have just really been insane lately, but I do want to own the Midnight Dance dolls one day. And I think their accessories are very cute, and I never really noticed that as a kid, so I'd like to own them again. Most underrated line in your opinion? I want to say Nighty Night, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I also think Flaunt It. I think Flaunt It doesn't have a good rep with some... Like, nobody talks about it, actually, so I don't think anyone really talks about Flaunt It. I think Flaunt It more accurately represents the core four, and I think those would be my underrated lines, for sure. How were you able to archive many of the Bratz information? Ugh, a lot of hard work. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. And it requires a lot of computer memory space, a lot of flash drives, a lot of everything. So, yeah, it's a lot. It took a while, but I did it, I guess. <laughs> did I have to learn any... This is another question attached to that. Did I learn any new technology to keep old and new information? I sort of, I, a lot of it was seeing how we can preserve Flash Player content, and we can, to an extent, so I think that was part of it, and also, I don't know, there was, I, I think I just had to learn how to then navigate my website setup, so yeah, that was it, not much. My favorite common brats, what is, it says, what is your favorite common brats? Um... I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm going to look around. I really like the, the budget lines from like the mid two thousands. I want to say like birthday bash and Hollywood style. I love those. And I think those are pretty common. Um, and I think a lot of people don't talk about them because of, you know, a lot of them reuse pieces, but I like those dolls a lot and they're right behind me. So they're listening and watching me. And they're definitely not forcing me to say any of this. What are the things that you would consider before purchasing a secondhand doll? So I said it earlier. Um, I would not buy it at a very high price. Very much consider if you think you'll find it for a better price later on. And also, like, look, is the hair damaged? Is the face damaged? Um, what does the doll look like, really? Like, what is the general condition of the doll? And are you willing to pay the price for a doll that is in that condition? So definitely keep that in mind when you're looking at dolls. Finally, we see your face. I feel like I've, I've shown my face before. Ultimate prize possession doll. Probably the baby's Felicia. What's your favorite Bratz song? 
probably ooh fashion and sorry to any david bowie fans but i think the brett's version is better than the original can we see your brett's room one day one day i have this dream and it'll probably come true one day but i want to take one of the rooms in my house and it's like okay with my family but it's a matter of getting the resources and the money to do it but i want to turn one of the rooms into a full-fledged brett's room one day do you think MJ Entertainment will make a playline out of Bratz dolls? They kind of are. I think Rock Angels and the 20 Years dolls do fall under playline, um, regardless of if they are collector edition to some people. But I do hope they do a playline where it's like new fashions and like new faces and all that. Uh, so hopefully one day. I want to see the collector edition Bratz that you own. Um, well, there's some behind me. And I have my GCDS dolls, but they're over there. But I took a lot of pictures, so they're on my Instagram. Um, and I also have, like, a Spring Fling Jade over here in the back. I don't have a lot of collector editions. I think I have some holiday dolls. I think you really have to define collector edition, because I think they'd say collector edition. But really, it was just a Playline doll. <laughs> What's your favorite Bratz movie? Probably Passion for Fashion Diamonds. And I also love Starrin' and Stylin' because it's just like a fun, easy to watch movie. When did you start loving Bratz and get into their world? Definitely 2006. Um, I had some like, you know, I've seen Bratz before that part of my life. Like 2004, I remember Starrin' and Stylin'. I did watch Bratz Rock Angels at some point in my life. And I did watch Genie Magic when it came on Nickelodeon. But um, yeah, it was definitely like fall 2006 was when it took over my life. Are there any Bratz lines that never got released? There's a lot. Um, I can't name them all at the moment. Um, there's that 4th of July line that I named earlier that was supposed to come out in 2012. There was like a garden tea party line that was supposed to come out. A wintertime wonderland um, on the tall bodies from 2013 that was supposed to come out. Oh, and there were supposed to be pride dolls. I don't think a lot of people know that. A lot of There's supposed to be pride dolls coming out in 2016 or 2017 where Roxy and Nevra were originally meant to be introduced as a couple and it was supposed to be Eaton and Thad from the on the mom on the mock on the mic line and the reason why they weren't released because they were too political and they came with like picket signs I believe sort of similar to what we saw from the designer pride leak so those were never released and there's a lot more unreleased all lines from Bretts and I cannot think of them all at the moment. So that's a good question. Maybe one day I'll do a thing dedicated to that. Favorite year of Bratz doll-wise? 2004, hands down. Love 2004. Have you ever thought of expanding Look and Bratz some more? I don't know in what sense that question was asked. Like, in which way? I do want to expand it in terms of just making it better. I guess I think the only way to really improve something good is to just keep trying to make it better, Is really. And I did want to... I wanted to expand it in the sense where I wanted to include other MJ lines, but it's also a lot of work. So I might never do that. I might do that one day if I feel up to it. At the moment, there's nothing in the works aside from really improving what's there now and building on from that at the moment because I really like to really like to spruce it up a little bit the website and make it look better and it doesn't look bad i don't think but i think there's a lot of improvements that i can make uh and then from there i might consider expanding some more most nostalgic important brats line to you it is probably live in concert because i used to re-watch that music video on repeat when it was on youtube it's still on youtube i don't know why i'm saying when it was um I loved that music video. I'd watch it all the time. I loved that song, Being Who We Are. So that is very nostalgic to me. I also have this weird attachment in my head to Rock Angel's Yasmin, a doll that I've never owned, by the way, but I think I always wanted her as a kid. And the same with Class Yasmin. I really wanted Class Yasmin as a kid, and I just never owned either of them. I think I got Rock Angel's Yasmin, but she was really beat up at, like last year. So I think I just donated her, or I put her somewhere, I don't remember. But I hope I get the reproduction soon of Rock Angel's Yasmin, because um, I really, I had, I always dream about her. 
don't know why. I've had dreams about this doll for the past 15 years. I do, and I always, in the dream, it's like me re-getting this doll, but I never owned the doll in the first place. But It's like a dream where I've owned the doll the entire time and I just found it again somewhere, like in a bin. I don't know. Like in like an old house that I lived in. And I don't know why I have that dream. But I want to get Rock Angels Yasmin because I think it needs to... I think it needs to happen <laughs> to, to fulfill that dream. Which doll is most sentimental? <gasps> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that. I think they all hold some sort of sentiment. Maybe even this Rock Angels Yasmin that I never owned holds a lot of sentiment to me. Who knows? <laughs> um, I do think... Oh. Ooh. I really like the study abroad Chloe. So she's kind of the odd one out on my shelf because she's from 2015 and a lot of people make fun of 2015, but I actually did like the reboot to some extent. And MGA sent this doll for me, to me for free. Um, so yeah, I do hold, she's, she holds a special place in my heart. Holy Grail doll. What is your Holy Grail of all the Bratz dolls? Probably live in concert, Nevra. And ooh, probably, I don't know. Rock Angel's Yasmin, maybe, because I keep thinking about her. <laughs> and I also really do want Class Yasmin. I think Cla the the one where she has the, the pink shawl, I love that one. I also do want Class, the Class UK collection, but those are so hard to find. What line would you love to see as a mini Bratz? So if you don't know yet, um, there's going to be a mini Bratz collection coming out soon. It's called... It says flashback minis on the listing, but I think they might just be called Bratz minis at the end of the day. And so far we know that there's going to be little reproductions of Formal Funk, Wintertime Wonderland, Pretty in Punk, First Edition, and possibly Rock Angels. Um, I'd love to see Live in Concert get considered for it. I'd even like to see the newer dolls like Holiday Felicia and the DCDS dolls. I'd like to see Slumber Party. I think that's a good one to put out there. And... It'd be so funny if we got head games. I think that'd be, if we got the little head games with the head on the star base, or even like funky fashion makeovers, I think that'd be really funny, actually, and cool to have. So I'd like to see those get produced as mini brats. I'm really hopeful and I'm excited to see what they do with that. Your least favorite brats line? Oh, um, I don't like the remix line from 2016. But a lot of people will go to 2015, 2016 and say their least favorite line. So if we're going with that, then yes, remix. Um, otherwise, I wasn't a big fan of the Passion for Fashion Spotlight collection. I didn't like their dresses initially, but now I kind of like them in a weird Versace kind of way. And I do actually like their second outfits, even though they're a little tacky. But they also remind me of first edition Jade's second outfit. So maybe those were not used to be my least favorite. But... Um, I also don't like, I wasn't a big fan of the Sunkiss dolls, the ones where their dresses change colors, and there's some lines from that era, like 27, 2007. 2007 was a rough year for Bratz, and I don't know if I liked all those lines. Do you have any custom-made dolls? Not necessarily. If you're, I feel like custom means like a new face, new hair. I really only have dolls with like different hair. So you saw my off the hook dolls, they have rerouted hair, and I also have some brats that I've rerouted, not a ton, um, just because they needed new hair. So I guess in a sense, yes, I do have customs, but not fully. Favorite Chloe, Jade, Sasha, and Yasmin doll? That is so hard. Sasha, I think, is welcome to Fabulous. I love her in that screening. Yasmin, maybe Hot Summer Days, actually. I think that's a stunning doll. Chloe, I don't know. I do like Secret Date Chloe. I love the Secret Date screening, and I'm realizing all of these have the Secret Date screening, which is fine. And Yasmin might also be Welcome to Fabulous. She has a really cute design. Actually, no, I lied. I think Class Yasmin. <laughs> I like Class Yasmin. My phone died, so we're going to come back to this. All right, I've let my phone charge for a bit. So I can finish off this little Q&A. 
although I don't know if it's a little anymore. If you haven't noticed, I really like to talk about dolls. I love to talk about brats. So, yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know how many questions I even got through because I'm definitely not getting through all of these, but I, I do want to get through as many as possible, especially because there have been some really interesting questions. And yeah, I just, I talk a lot, especially when I'm, a, I'm passionate about this. So, so what's your goal with collecting brats? Completion variants, non-doll de items like decor. Um, I don't know if I want, I would, I think a, a complete collection sounds like fun, but I also don't know if I need that to feel satisfied. Like right now, I think I'm good with my collection. I think I'd like to, obviously I'd love other dolls from other lines, like I'd love Midnight Dance, I'd love Live in Concert Nevra, <laughs> who I keep bringing up. I'd love um, Midnight Dance, I, I think I said Midnight Dance already, never mind me. I like, you know, the class dolls, I'd like, I'd like Rock Angels. <laughs> That's the one thing, I feel like such a fake Bratz collector because I don't really have any Rock Angels. and. I like some of like the or earlier lines, like flaunted. Oh, well, we're getting that this year in terms of reproduction, so that that'll be fine. And then I I like um, style it, strut it, those kinds of things. Like I like to acquire things over time, but I I I don't know if I'd ever want to be a completionist in that sense with brats specifically because it is hard to track everything down, and there's been a lot released over the past 21 years, and I think it'd be a lot to keep up with. I think right now I'd like to, you know, get what I can, and you know, if there's a line that I really want to complete, like I'd love to get Tokyo Go Go and complete that line, I'd like to get Slumber Party, I'd like to get Nighty Night, those sorts of lines, then yes, um, I'll definitely hopefully do that in the future, but I'm in no rush. Um, I think a lot of people are in a rush to get as many brats as possible, as many dolls as possible. And I don't see my passion ever burning for this, like burning away. I don't know if I'm using the terminology correctly. I don't ever see it going away, really. So um, I think I'm good with really just doing my collection over time and not being in a rush to get everything at once at the moment. Given the opportunity to design a Bratz line yourself, what vibe would you go with? I did get a few questions like this, and I would love to design a Bratz line. I think that'd be so much fun. Um, I do have a lot of ideas bubbling in my head of what Bratz would look like in terms of if they were to move forward with Playline or move forward with a collector doll line. I have so many ideas, and I, I don't know if I can fully <laughs> speak them out right now just because it's a lot, but I do have a lot of ideas. I'd like to see them go with the route that they were going in maybe picking up from 2009 um something like that but really like elevating the brand i'd want to i if i were to design for the brats or even do something in terms of marketing or social media or you know just doing something with the brand i'd want to elevate it as much as possible and really bring it to the next level and make it accessible to as many people as possible would you ever do doll reviews on YouTube? I want to. I think that's why I'm doing these videos. That's, I, I want to try it out. I want to see where it goes, what happens with it. I think doll reviews could be fun, especially if I did doll reviews on like older dolls. Also, I forgot to mention in terms of the prototypes and samples, I actually do have, um, if you remember the Bratz plushes that came out in 2002, I actually have a Yasmin head pillow that I purchased last year, I believe, and it's so cool. Um, I don't have it with me at the moment, it's at my apartment, but I do have that. And that is a sample. It's from the licensing company Fun For All, and it has notes on it of what had to be changed. Um, those pillows never actually went into production, so that was a really cool item to own. I got a lot of Brad Silas questions. Um, would you like a Brad Silas comeback? And do you think uh, comeback would be more su successful now for Bretzillas? And who is my fave Bretzillas? So I think Bretzillas could be a really cool comeback. I think MGA has a lot on its plate right now. So I don't know how feasible a comeback would be, but it would be cool to see them come back and maybe elevate 
um, what they had. I think they were a really cool line. And I like to see them really, like, elevate what it was, especially because it came out during a weird time for MGA. A lot of the dolls had poly hair, and I like to see them do it differently if they ever did come back. But I think it would be cool to see it come back. And I love witches. I thought it was really cool to have a witch themed line and that's what I like about MGA is that they're filling niches in the market sometimes of what's not there like I feel that OMG and LOL filled a niche in the market that wasn't you know being fulfilled and Bratz obviously fulfilled a niche in the market of they're not being very f diverse dolls on the market at the time and I think you know, while we had Monster High, and Bratzilla's was obviously the answer to Monster High, um, there weren't weren't really ever witch dolls on the market. Every once in a while you'd get a witch line, but I thought it was cool to have like one brand dedicated to witches. And I love witches, like I love Charmed, that's my favorite TV series, the original Charmed. Um, I do like the new Charmed, but that's a whole other story. Um, I love uh, Witches of Eastwick, I love... Um, American Horror Story Coven. I, I love witches. I think they're amazing. So it was so cool to see a line of witches come out. So it would be cool to see them come back. Maybe just a more elevated version of what they had. And my fave Bratzillas. Um, my first fave was probably Yasmina. I liked her hairstyle a lot and I liked her outfit. But I think overall I really liked some of the one-off characters. I really wanted Fianna Fins and I never got a chance to own her. And I liked Vampelina, but I do think my fave fave might actually be Ileana Honesty. No, 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 no. It wasn't Ileana, sorry. It was Victoria Antique. I found her at Burlington a few years ago, and she was only like 10 bucks. And I was so excited to find her, and I bought her. And she's actually a really lovely doll out of the box. She's very fun and cute. What doll or dolls are you most excited to be released or reproduced? I think all of them, and I, it's hard to choose one. I've always wanted all of Girls' Night Out, and I never had a chance to buy those in stores because that was like before I really got into Bratz, and they're so expensive now. But I do, I do have Sasha and Yasmin back here, and they're not complete, but they're here and they're cute, and I'm really excited to see them reproduce those. I think it, I hope it looks good. I hope it looks, um, you know, faithful, faithful to the original. I'm a little scared about the rooted eyelashes. Because I don't know, if they stick with the UV printing method, I don't know how that's going to work out. But I guess we'll see in time what that looks like. I'm super excited for Flaunt It. I have two of my Flaunt It girls in the background. Um, I don't have Yasmin or Sasha, so I want to get them, obviously. And that's actually a really cute line, again. I think those really reflect the styles of each girl very well. Oh, and that also reminds me, an underrated Bratz line, actually. I was just thinking about this is Talkin' Bratz, which I do have all of them down there. I think Talkin' Bratz doesn't get enough flowers, honestly. And, you know, I feel like those were, like, really great outfits for each girl. And even though, like, their bodies are stiff and posed, I think they're still really great. Their face-ups also, their face screenings are gorgeous, their makeup palettes are gorgeous, the hair is gorgeous, the outfits look great, and I think it really ties them back into you know, their style, and it also gives them a modern, updated look for what it was in 2006. And I really did like Talkin' Bratz, the dolls and the show. <laughs> also, in terms of, like, reproductions, um, I'm really... Are there other... Re I don't think there's any other reproductions planned to come out, except for Flaunt It. And there's also Tokyo Kumi and Girls' Night Out. Tokyo Kumi... I haven't heard, we haven't heard much of, so I don't know, I'm starting to question if she's actually gonna come out, honestly, um, but if we're talking about, like, the mini reproductions, I'm actually very excited for Bratz minis. I think, to an extent, I might be more excited for the mini Bratz more than anything, because, again, if you saw my last video, I love the Bratz Little Angels, because they're so low maintenance, you don't have to do their hair, you don't have to worry about much, so I'm very excited to have those little, little tiny Bratz. Um, especially because I want to build them like a little shelf to put them on. I think it's going to be such a cute release. And I'm very excited to see what they do with those. And I also love mini things. I love figurines. Like, I, I'm i obsessed with these um, little Bratz figurines. I don't know if you can see them 
in the background. Let me grab some, actually. So I have more of these. I have um, the Flaunted Girls, and then there's a Strutted Megan. It's like their artwork, but it's like a, in figurine form. And you can see that on lookandbrats.com in the database. I believe it's in the year 2003 through 2005. And they came out with like these little keychains, and I love these so much. I think these were only in certain countries, probably like Italy. Um, and they came in like chocolate eggs. Then you like open it, and there was a surprise. It's like a little brat stall. And they also came in like bags of chips and those kind of things. Um, so yeah, I love mini brats, and I, I hyper fixated on these like 12 years ago because I saw them on a website i don't remember what website it was a selling website and i was like i need these and this is another thing like i started to have dreams about these and then a few years ago i finally like you know becoming an adult i had money and i was able to buy things so i got them on ebay you just have to search up like bratz figurines or bratz kinder like the kinder chocolate eggs or um bratz gyochi preziosi and these will come up um, and I have all of them, I believe, from those sets, like the Kinder-type egg sets. I don't think they're directly from Kinder, but it's like a Kinder-type company. Um, so I'm so excited to see the Mini Brats. I think those are going to be so cute and a lot of fun. And I think it's going to be a lot of nostalgia. And I posted about them on Facebook, and there's been a lot of hype from, you know, casual fans and, like, you know, actual collectors. So I think there's going to be a lot of... Um, I think it's going to be a very successful launch, I'm hoping, because uh, I'd love to see them actually continue with the mini brands. And I also, I love the, I love the LOL OMG minis, like those are so cute. I started to collect those, but they start to get pricey after a while, and they're blind box, so that's my one issue, is I don't like blind box that much. But I do have some of those, and those are super cute, so I'm glad to see them doing it with Bratz. What is that by the movie star Bratz in the pink package? So I did take these down. Um, so if you followed me in like August 2020 on Instagram, um, I started this thing called Lookin' Bratz Mysteries, and I need to continue it because I do have a lot more Bratz Mysteries that I just, I have in the archives in terms of like dolls that were released or never released or just hard to come by. So when I launched Lookin' Bratz in May of 2020, I had this fan, I believe she was from, oh no, he was from South Africa. And he mentioned these uh, Bratz the Movie dolls that were like micro or little Bratz. And I had never seen them and he didn't have pictures of them and I tried to do as much research as, as possible. And they were impossible to come by. And then in August of 2020, my friend sent me links to, on eBay to these micro Bratz the Movie dolls. And it was Sheridan and it was Yasmin. And I was shook the house down, boots, mama. I was on the floor. I was gagged. <laughs> Sorry, but I got them. And they were only like 20 bucks each. And there's Sher Sheridan. And there's Yasmin. And, okay, can we talk about Yasmin? She, she is gorgeous. So these are, Little Bratz had like, not a spinoff, but it was just like Little Bratz. They were called Micro Bratz. When Little Bratz actually first came out, they were labeled as Micro Bratz, but they only said Bratz on the package. But if you had worked in the stores, the sheet, like the selling sheet or whatever, or the when you were stocking shelves, it would they would call them Micro Bratz. So in 2005, they came out with Micro Bratz for the Rock Angels line, but it was really just repackaged Little Bratz Rock Stars dolls. And then in 2006, they had micro bratz genie magic which were actually new designs using the genie magic clothing like miniature scaled down versions of the genie magic dolls and then i found out they did micro bratz the movie and so yasmin is wearing a, a small replica of her dress and she has a little purse and the back of it is her regular doll and the seller was from canada so I was like, you know, were these dolls widely released? And I think they may have been in certain countries because I had another person from South Africa, I believe she sent me pictures of her dolls. They weren't in the package, but you could tell like they had all the different colored dresses. Um, she had Sasha, Jade, and Chloe, I believe, and I think Yasmin. I was more shook that they had a little Brett Sheridan. And I think this is such a cool piece to own. I'm so happy to own this one. 
Um, so Sheridan is basically like a little Elani. So if you remember Little Bratz, they had different characters, and one of them was named um, or Elani. I'm not sure. And she was like the Chloe counterpart of the group. And this is basically Elani, but with black hair. Um, but it's so cool because it's Sheridan. It's a new character for Little Bratz. And then Yasmin. Yasmin had been a character before in Little Bratz, but this is very reminiscent of Talia from the Little Bratz, and she's wearing mini Yasmin's dress. I mean, they are Yasmin and Sheridan, but they look very much like Ailani and Talia. But yeah, those are my Micro Bratz the movies. If you want to read more about it, um, if you go to my Instagram at Bratz, there is a story highlight. It's probably deep down when you scroll through it, and it's called Lookin' Bratz Mysteries, and I talk a lot more about them, and I show more pictures. But those are my Micro Bratz the movie dolls. And I have more Look and Bratz mysteries. I just haven't had the time or patience. But there are so many mysteries to be solved or that have been solved that I just haven't posted about. This is kind of funny and random. What is your opinion on Byron as a character? And it's funny because there's been some a little bit of discourse on Twitter about Byron Powell from the Bratz movies and show. I don't really mind Byron. Um, he's funny, I guess. Um, I don't like, I don't like how he got them into all those situations and how he, like, used them, the brats in some capacity, but he's, like, an okay character, I guess. Um, and he was definitely, like, overused in season two, which was part of the discourse on Twitter. When did you first see Bratz and what was your initial reaction? Did I start answering this question? I mean, it was 2006, and I think I was very, it was because the girls in school were playing with them and bringing them to school, and I was very, like into like the fashion i was into the hair i thought they were so cool and cartoonish looking and i don't know and i really liked the messaging behind the dolls at times like express yourself be yourself and i think that was something i needed to hear as a kid because i never felt like i was like a normal child i mean what child really is normal but i felt like i wasn't fitting into like gender norms as much and i felt like i wasn't um fitting into the roles that people were expecting me to fill really learning about owning my individuality expressing myself and also valuing friendship and also like looking good at the same time i guess like i really i like the messaging behind it i think a lot of people saw brats as a very superficial brand but i think it did go a bit deeper than that so that's what really drew me to brats and the same like someone asked how has brats influenced your life I think they really helped me be unapologetically myself and really owning who I am and not being ashamed of it. How time consuming was setting up the Look and Brad site? So time consuming. Um, it, I started archiving the products in 2015 and then I gave up at some point and I saved everything and then I picked it up again in 2016, by later 2016, and I had a lot of good good stuff going at that point it was just a lot of work and i took a lot of breaks in between and then when i actually got to start building the site was 2018 and from there it took about two and a half years to get to where it was by the time of its launch and then within like the launch week like after i launched it i was still adding more because i had like hundreds of more products to add that i just hadn't added originally and it's still very a time consuming Thing to do like I still have like hundreds more products to add I have a lot of designs to like revamp a lot of stuff was gonna happen with the website I'm hoping to get it to its best appearance very soon and its best accessibility easier navigation that kind of stuff in the very very near future it's very time-consuming though I got a lot of sweet messages just saying thank you and that they like my website and they like my social media so I really appreciate that thank you what is your favorite part of the Bratz community? I love that I've been able to make a lot of connections and friendships with a lot of different people from around the world. And I think I've learned a lot about, I think I, as a kid, wasn't really good at socializing at times. And I think um, being in the Bratz community really helped me with that social aspect and really understanding other people and becoming an understanding individual and I think sometimes we don't know how to be compassionate towards one another and I think that's helped a lot it's helped me see a lot of other people's struggles and it's just helped me understand people in general so I'm really happy to have made those connections and I do think there's a lot of 
room for improvement in terms of like being compassionate and being nice to others in the community, the doll community in general. But I'm sure every community and fandom has that issue in some capacity. But yeah, I'm just really grateful for all the friendships I've made. I've been friends with a lot of people since 2009, and that is wild to think about. So I'm really thankful for that, and I think that's my favorite part of the Bratz community. What was Bratz's biggest misstep? <gasps> I don't know. There's been a, there's been quite a bit. I think a lot of people might jump to 2010, but I'm gonna jump to 2013. I think it was a misstep to give the dolls new bodies, especially when the bodies weren't very flattering um, to the heads, like the head mold. I think they could have revamp the dolls in a different way and I think the brand is always constantly reinventing itself in some capacity but um, I would say probably 2013 I don't think they should have gone in that direction and I think a lot of people might jump to 2015 as well and see that that was a misstep and it may have been but I think it was all done with good intentions uh, for the brand and I think there were people some people may have one of the brand to succeed and had very different visions of what it was supposed to look like. And I, I just think, I think everything that is a misstep may have not been done out of malice for the brand. I, I think maybe towards the later end of like, as we went past 2016, some things in terms of marketing may be missteps and those may have been more of the brand maybe some people not wanting to see the brand succeed but that's a whole other issue but i think right now um it's not a misstep right now but i would like to see them revamp a lot and really um take ownership of the brand and really make it what it used to be but elevate it a doll you regret buying i don't know i don't know if i can say there's any brad dolls i regret buying but i know there's a lot of dolls like outside of the Brad's brain that I do regret buying. Um, yeah, sometimes you just, you think you want something and you don't. Or maybe, I don't know, there's, there's other dolls I regret buying, but I'm not gonna get into that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I've had some people try to flirt. Um, there's been some times where it's been like harassment I don't know if some people fully understand when they're harassing others. For some people, it's been just been like, oh, like, you're cute. And that's fine. Like, I appreciate that. Like, thank you for the compliment. Other times, it's been a little bit creepier. So I think some people just need to, like, learn where to draw the boundaries. Um, I've had some flirting. I've had some harassment. It's whatever. What do you think of the Bratz lines that came with the mini CDs? Do you like them? So I know this person. <laughs> and I think we both have the same sort of fascination with um, dolls that came with like DVDs and CDs because I have that I said that in the last video like I loved it when dolls came with DVDs and I love just finding like obscure discs for brands like I don't know like I, I tend to like really be into that stuff so I loved it when Brett's the Forever Diamonds the babies dolls I liked when those came with DVDs and then they had this Forever Diamonds design contest and they were giving away free DVDs at Walmart, I believe. And I never got them at the time, but I do own it now. And it has like some really cool footage on it of like interviews. And you can see that on YouTube somewhere. Maybe I'll just upload it on my channel to have like the full length DVD on it. Cause there's only bits and pieces on YouTube, but I thought that was a really cool DVD. And it didn't come with the dolls exactly, but it was cool. And then Rock Angels came with mini CDs and that was pretty cool. I thought it was a cool design cause it looked like a little vinyl record and the being who we are the live in concert that was a great song so i love that cd like i think it was really cool when they would come with cds and i know some people are disappointed with rock angels reproductions not having cds but i also don't know if it was really realistic or needed to have the cds with the dolls because i do think cds unfortunately are becoming a bit more obscure and they're not as sought after by people except for people who actually collect cds like myself like i love cds and i will collect them forever but i don't think there was a need for them to be with the rock angels dolls but that's the new rock angels dolls i think the old ones are fine um but yeah i did like it when dolls came with cds i wish brats did more of that to an extent like i 
I really want to know which dolls came with it that in Australia that came with the CD-ROM that had the Bratz Party Night game trailer on it, which I have on my YouTube channel, so search up Bratz Formal Funk and it'll come up. So I want to know what dolls came with that and where in the package it was. And I also, those dolls that were in that Dubai Toys R Us that came with DVDs in them, I, I need pictures of that. And I need to, I think there were Bratz episodes on the DVDs, but I just want to know. And I'd love to own those DVDs because that is super cool. Of all the unique Bratz items you have, which is your favorite? I have a lot of different Bratz items. I will say I did like those keychains that I showed you earlier that came with the little Easter chocolate eggs. Um, those are some of my faves. I think those are cool. Um, so I, I'm, I'm tempted to say that, but I also, I like finding the little expired makeup. <laughs> and people will like, some people will rag on me for this about like being obsessed with expired children's makeup. But it's like a cool display piece and I'm not using it like I'm not using it like actual makeup so yeah whatever and also like I'll find like cool things here and there like this tin I like that tin back there I like the jewelry boxes I like Brad's decor um, and I like just like the little obscure things that you'll find randomly so <laughs> some people ask me about my rarest Brad doll and yes I definitely think baby's Felicia is the rarest but I recently found this on eBay, and it was in Canada. And I recently got the Jean B doll, the Jean Baker or Becker doll. So sorry to that fashion icon. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. But I got her, and she's, like, not necessarily rare, but she's a little harder to come by because she was a Canada exclusive. And then I always knew that the Bratz Forever Diamonds had a carrying case for the dolls, but I never saw the actual pack. And I got it, and it comes with a Chloe. And it's like another, like, refurbished Nighty Night Chloe. And I was kind of shook, and I had to get it, of course, because, like, in in what timeline am I gonna see this again? So I did get this, and I do think this is a very rare piece, possibly. And I also think next to that, it's those micro Brad stalls and any prototypes or samples that are out there those are definitely rare and hard to come by so yeah so I feel like I've probably skipped over a lot of questions because my phone died and I don't know where I left off um, I also asked questions on Twitter that was just Instagram y'all but a lot of the questions on Twitter I think aligned with a lot of the Instagram questions but I will take a quick looky loo on Twitter okay this is one I really like this is from Banana's Mom. Hey. Name three obscure or lesser known MJ doll lines that you own and if you can show us in the video. So I did prepare for this question a bit. Um, so I think the first one I'm going to show is the Fairies line. And when Bratz Fashion Pixies came out, I think they were going to be called Bratz Fashion Fairies because there's some um, merchandise that says it and it's spelled with like the same spelling. But the Fairies dolls, it's like F-A-I-R-E-E-S, and then for Fashion Fairies is going to be with a Z for the Bratz. But these are so cute, and they're also scented. Um, so I do have one of these. I do want to get more eventually. I got her last year. And the artwork is probably the same artist as the Little Bratz art. It's um, the same face, essentially, as a Little Bratz doll. But these are adorable, and the face is very similar to a Forever Best Friends doll. The next one I have in my closet, I don't know where it is, it's called My Favorite Babysitter, and this is something that Banana's mom actually posted about once, and the doll's name is Sabina, and this is before Sabina from Bratz came out, so obviously they like to reuse names a lot between their brands, so I have that set somewhere. And then the next one, oh, I love her. I realize she's being blocked by my Bratz pad, but I'm actually going to try to get her. So trying to get two things behind my Brad's pad is like an obstacle course, but it's the Amy Go Shopping line. So Amy was a doll line by MGA, and I there's not tons of information on it, but they had quite like you know quite a bit of releases going on, and one of them I guess they were trying to capitalize off the Brad's success, um, and they have like a mini Brad doll in there. It's a mini Megan, and they've reproduced that one quite a bit for the fashion passion pens and also for the little figurines I was talking about that were released in Italy but this doll is super cute 
super cute and I'm so tempted to take her out of the box and like display her but I think her box design is so cool and her box design is essentially the same as like the Bratz style in Salon and Spa from 2003 and some of the look and Bratz like the actual original look and Bratz makeup designs so it's obviously all in the family all in the MGA family and it's the same time period it's all 2003 so yes I do love this doll she is so pretty and they have a few versions of these and I, I was so lucky to get this one at like 25 bucks because then someone was trying to sell another one for a hundred and I wasn't paying a hundred dollars for that my fave three artists um I love Cher I love the Spice Girls and I'll just say Charlie XCX because people say I look like her sometimes and it's kind of funny because I don't fully see it but it's funny to play into that my fave Brett spinoff I don't know. I love them all, honestly, to some extent. I think Brad's kids had, like, maybe the strongest impact in my life because when Bratz was, like, going downhill in 2007, I felt like Brad's kids was shooting up in terms of fashion and quality. But then 2008 was horrible because they did the snap-on fashions, and I don't know what the reason was for that, um, but it felt like they were sabotaging that brand. The most unique item in my Bratz collection, probably these little keychains. I don't know. And also, I like the, oh, 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 you know what? I should show it. The Bratz Collectibles figurines. These are so hard to come by these days. Let me grab some. Wow, I should have grabbed these ahead of time because now I'm like getting up and moving a lot. <laughs> but the Bratz Collectibles, they had their own website. And it was like, just like little Bratz figurines. And I have Jade, Sasha, and I have Yasmin, but I didn't grab her. And these are so cool. I want to get Chloe eventually. And I think they only had two pets. And I do have both. Um, I think this is Bridget. Or Kendall. I don't know. <laughs> and these are like little jewelry boxes for the pets. And I have the other one. She's on the shelf. And then my Yasmin's on the shelf. And I really just need Chloe. I don't know if there were any more released. But at the time that is unknown. What is your ethnic background? I am Armenian. What direction do you think Bratz are going to go in after this Falls Lines debut? I hope I said that right. <laughs> um, I'm hoping they go Playline, at least. Along with going Collector, I like the designer dolls. I think it's cool that they're collaborating with all of these brands. Like, that is so exciting for the brand. I hope they continue that path, but I hope they actually do Playline dolls that are new designs and not just reproductions. I think reproductions are cool, and they can still do them. But I want to see, like, actual new designs on store shelves. Are you a Meganator or part of the Dana Nation? Um, I don't know if I can ethically answer that question. Um, especially when I am in the presence of two queens. Okay, um, so if you don't know, some Bratz fans have a theory that Megan and Dana are feuding with each other in the Stylesville world because when Megan left in 2003, she moved out of town, Dana took her spot, and then obviously Megan came back in 2004, the following year, so I don't know why they made her move out of town, but I, I mean, obviously, I think it was because they wanted it to be realistic that friends do move out of town, and kids were experiencing that, but she came back. But yeah, people think that these two do not like each other, and I play into that a lot. Like, I... I, I I play into the feud and I'll I'll make jokes about it a lot. And I, I I love them both. I can't really choose one. I think a lot of the times I've loved Dana's dolls just a bit more. Sorry, Megan. Um, but I also think Dana rehashes a lot of Megan's clothing, and I think the same for Megan is she's rehashed a lot of Dana's clothing. And there's been a lot of times and I think cause the feud started because people noticed that not only that Dana took Megan's spot as the fifth Bratz member in two thousand three but that also, they don't really appear in a lot of lines together. So it's an interesting theory, but I will say, Megan has made it a point to come back for every Bratz comeback and every Bratz era. She was there in 2010, 2013, 2015. She wasn't there in 2018, sorry girl. But she was here this year in 2022. And Dana is coming back, but I don't know. I think Megan might have a little bit more impact because she is the redhead and she does have a different distinct look whereas Dana can be confused for Jade by people who don't really know Bratz as well. What do your friends and family think of your doll collection? 
Um, I think when I was younger, it was more like, whatever, and I talked about that a bit earlier in the video. Um, my friends didn't really know about it until uh, maybe I was a teenager, and it was a little weird to them, but they also, like, didn't really care because they were my friends, and I think your true friends and, you know, the people who really love you will love you regardless of your doll collection, um, regardless of your interests in, like, feminine things, especially if you're male identifying if you're female identifying there can be taboo with doll collecting as an adult but the people who truly love you and care about you are going to accept you regardless of what you do and what you collect so keep that in mind and i will never keep people in my life if they cannot respect me if they cannot respect what i do if they cannot respect my passions like that is a requirement and that should be a requirement for everybody don't keep people in your lives unless you necessarily have to for your well-being and to live um don't keep those people in your lives if they cannot accept you but for the most part like my mother loves it my grandmother has grown to you know accept it and she actually gets excited now when i do things on social media so that's very nice and all my friends think it's cool and they're you know i think a lot of people don't understand that other people don't necessarily have hobbies some people are, are, and that's like not a thing against people without hobbies, like it's totally fine and cool. You don't need to have a hobby, but some people are like, I wish I had a hobby like that so that I could, you know, keep myself entertained on the off time. And that's completely fair and I'm happy that people see it in that way, that it's like a hobby and that it's cool and that it's fun. And it's obviously it's led me to some great opportunities, so um, I think a lot of people do respect it. And if they don't, then bye. I don't know. <laughs> What's your fave doll to restyle and why? Uh, I liked styling for the, um, oh, oh, it's right behind me. The Bratz Passion for Fashion Destiny. I redid her hair and I gave her that fashion pack. I think it's the Get Down Groove fashion pack from 2004. I wasn't really sure what to do with Destiny. I've had her for a long, long time, actually, since 2012. And before that, I owned her when I was a kid, but then I got rid of her because her hair was terrible, and it still is, but I managed to make something of it. And she's also wearing these mm. shoes from, ooh, I just heard a boat, or some sort of horn, it's there again. Okay, <laughs> uh, the shoes from August Doll on uh, Instagram. I restyled her, and I did a photo shoot with her, I was really happy with it. So yeah, I this is my favorite restyle, I guess you could say, that I am most proud of. I really loved it, and it made me like Destiny more, because um, I, I don't have any of her original clothing. I do have her heels, but I also think, feel like her original design was a little random. Like, it was cute, but I don't know. I think this is a cuter <laughs> look for her. And it looks like we're about to wrap up. And again, I feel like I've talked so much, and I'm going to pray for myself that the that it doesn't take a long time to edit this. Top three fave and worst screenings. Secret Date is a best one. Um, I really like... Hmm, that's a hard question. I don't know. I think Secret Date is like my top. Talking Brats, actually, I'll give them that. I love their screenings. And I really love... Oh, I love the Nighty Night screening. I didn't like it as a kid because I thought they looked funny. But now I love it. It looks very sultry and nice. So I will go with a Nighty Night. And top three worst. Um, I don't like... Not that I don't like Wild Wild West, but... Some of them look a little crazy. I think Dana has become a meme within the Bratz community. She looks a little, like, bug-eyed. And I don't like... I think 2015 is an easy one to say, but it also feels like a cop-out because anyone can easily say 2015 because a lot of people do not like the 2015 dolls. But those were, I think, believed to be similar to the pretty and punk slash yeah like the pretty and punk screenings and they didn't do a good job at replicating that and another one i don't like i'm not i'm not really sure i don't necessarily like hate screenings i also oh you know what i will say 
I'm not a big fan of Yasmin's earlier screenings, like Express It. I don't like her screening that much, and I don't like her formal funk screening. Her head, her forehead, and I think a lot of people will say this, just looks ginormous, and it's not very flattering. So, sorry, Yasmin. <laughs> and I believe that's it. So, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, I probably should have curated the questions a little bit more before I went into filming this. But I'm home and I'm going back to my apartment in a bit, so I figured I'd do this while I'm here because I'm in the process of moving out of my apartment and then I'll just be home uh, for the most part. So that'll be fun because I'll be near my dolls. Uh, thank you again for watching and I'm hoping to do more videos like this and maybe more doll reviews, that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that and make sure to follow Lookin' Bratz. It's at Lookin' Bratz on every platform. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and obviously YouTube, and make sure to check out lookinbrats.com where you can find the largest Bratz database, and there's tons of stuff on there that you can check out. Hundreds and hundreds of pages of just Bratz content, and I am going to re be revamping that very soon, so look forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. And thank you again for watching, and feel free to subscribe because I definitely want to make more YouTube videos where I sit down and talk to you about brats and doll-related things. So thanks again, and I'll see you later.